Appeals 11, 12, and 13, Connolly, Bauman, and Huron versus Long Island Power Authority. Counsel? Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the Court, my name is David Laser, and I appear on behalf of the appellants, Long Island Power Authority and National Grid Electric Services. May I reserve three minutes for rebuttal, please? You may, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. This Court has repeatedly said that the question Counsel, of what, what constitutes the exercise of the police power in, in, in the decision-making process that you rely on, or that your client relies on? Because that's what the cases say. It's the exercise of the police power. Well, I was, <laughs> I was about to say it's the specific act or omission that caused the injury, and that goes to what Yes, but it has to track back to the exercise of the police power. And, and the exactly. power here is protecting the public and the public safety from a grave public emergency. But doesn't, doesn't all uh, government action in some way, isn't it meant to protect or benefit the public? Well, protect and benefit are two different things, Judge Stein. Obviously, uh, as counsel pointed out in his opposing brief, everything the government does is supposed to benefit people. But here we have the so-called storm of the century, and many thousands of people's lives are in peril. We had a declaration by the governor and the mayor. But, but let's talk about the specific act or omission, okay. which you refer to. Is it, doesn't that simply have to do with whether they were going to use their electric uh, transmission uh, system in a, in a particular way? I don't think so. If you, we look at the specific act or omission, it's claimed here to be that we failed to preemptively de-energize right. the Rockaway Peninsula. And that means to shut the power off deliberately a day or more in advance. But how is that any different from a private utility, a con ed? This is what I'm saying. Where's the police power? The police power obviously is being exercised in the deployment or, or choice not to deploy and where to deploy, police, firefighter, EMT. I, I understand all of that, but I'm having difficulty understanding your client's argument that the choice about turning off the energy, because that's what de-energizing means, right? Right. It, it can be tracked back to the exercise of the police power, which as I read the cases is the essential action. I'm not sure that I agree with that, that, okay. that it's only about the police power. I think Applewhite talks about the government acting for the protection and safety of the public. I don't know. There are plenty of police yes, protection but pursuant cases. Pursuant to its police power, you don't have to be a police officer, the government to exercise police power, right? Correct. But to, to address your issue with respect to Con Ed, and, and as the appellate division said, uh, all utilities face the, the same storm. Well, that argument was raised in the World Trade Center case when Judge Saparic said many uh, of the large buildings owned by private landlords face terrorist threats. And the difference is that the Port Authority owned the World Trade Center, and that's a government. And if it was Rockefeller Center, we'd have a different situation. The Miller case involved a young woman who was assaulted at Stony Brook University, a state university, if that was at St. John's, we wouldn't have a Miller case. So there is a distinction to be made when the same act is performed by a government as opposed to a non-government, and that's what Wiener says. Why aren't there issues of fact here where we're better off deciding the, the issue uh, with a fuller record? Well, I'm not sure that there are issues of fact that will be changed, Judge Wilson, with respect to the size of the storm, with respect <clears throat> to the fact that we did not de-energize de in the Rockaways and that we did in Fire Island and well, nowhere else. What about issues of fact of who was involved in the decision making and uh, what discussions were had and what was said and uh, what questions were asked in, in terms of uh, making the decision? Well, Judge Feynman, I, I don't know that the court's jurisprudence says we need to know who the decision maker was. And I think in well, some of the... Well, if anybody would know, it would be you, wouldn't it? Well, certainly it's not on the record before the court now, right, but, but the, a decision was clearly made but by But you don't need law. discovery to, 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 to figure that out. You know. We know yeah. that there was a decision, and it was posted on the website and on Twitter, which said LIPA is going to de-energize in conjunction with an evacuation by Suffolk County officials, going to de-energize Fire Island, and has no plans to de-energize anywhere else. And well, that's a decision. who's authorized to make such a decision? within the LIPA structure? Who's the, authorized to do that? There are plenty of people. Michael Hervey, for one, who's the, the CEO, mm -hmm. uh, and others who work in conjunction with him. And but in close consultation with the It's not the governor. Right? It's not the the governor. Is, it, is it an elected official? 
He's not an elected official. No, but no, no. I, is it, so it's not an elected official who makes this choice, right? Elected official can say to LIPA, as they did in the Fire Island instance, we would like you to de-energize this area to protect people. And that we went along with and said yes. But the decision in general are is... Are you independently able to disagree? Is your client independently able to disagree with a government official's directive? I don't know that we would, but I think we do retain that power, of course. It's ultimately our system, and we can shut it down or not. Obviously, it depends on who that public official is. You the know, county executive, the mayor, or the governor, you, you don't take lightly uh, mm -hmm. what they say. You know, it, it seems that the distinction between what's a, uh, a governmental and a proprietary action um, is more rooted in the historical analysis that's taken place around the individual actions. So, for instance, power companies, are they private or are they public? Well, we have, I think, 47 public power companies in New York State, and we have a number of, uh, though the vast majority of the population is served by private power companies. And it, it's, it, it's, I think, incumbent upon us to really not deal with this in a historical vacuum. And that's, I think, where I struggle with, um, because I can think of no instances, and in, point them to me if I'm wrong, um, where, um, the, this decision w wouldn't be considered a proprietary action. Well, I disagree. I think when you're, when you're saying, I'm going to deliberately black out thousands of people, and, mm -hmm. and by extension, and, and I want to... Uh, well, go ahead. No, no, I point focus to... The court. Point, let, me, let me stop you. Sure. Point to specific instances. To the specific instances, I'm so sorry. To specific fake. instances where this action uh, would not be a proprietary action. It would not be an action that had been traditionally been done by the private sector. It, and that decision wouldn't be made by the private sector if the decision maker was the private sector. So, it's, for instance, the village of Arcade has a public power company. Well, all right, if Arcade decides to shut down the power, then it's made by a governmental agency. But show me where in New York State, this tr decision traditionally has not been that made by the private sector. Well, this decision to shut off the power to thousands of people by implication all across Long Island. We have 120 miles of... I, we understand that. Okay. Tell so me, that give me some examples. Is, it's, it's not really a decision. That it, it, it's kind of sui generis, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really come before this court. So you're saying it's, it's uh, um, uh, uh, the nature of the emergency that makes it a governmental action. Absolutely. You had a declaration of disaster well, by the mayor. Let, and let me ask you this. You all replaced a private entity, correct? Yes, we did. Okay. So if you had not, and Lilco was still in place, wouldn't Lilco have been making the same decision? So again, I'm, 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 well, I'm not certain I understand the argument how this is other than proprietary. Well, let me, let me address, because I know Justice Fahey uh, talked about the historical yes. perspective, and, and let's talk about history now. The MTA gets immunity and has gotten it from this court and from the appellate divisions. Now, the MTA controls the railroads. The railroads were privately owned for more than a century. Jay Gould and J.P. Morgan and all those guys, the MTA was, in fact, created to take over the Long Island Railroad. And the things that we now call the Metro North portion of the MTA were, in fact, owned by the New York Central and the Penn Central, privately owned railroads. So if we're going to talk history, we're going to talk about whether or not the MTA ever should get immunity. Well, I, I was more getting to the point that you made, which was that it was the nature of the emergency that was a key factor in, in, in determining whether it was public or private. Is that the point? That it's you're... to protect the public, okay? okay. We are All protecting right. the public when we make that decision because we're talking about thousands, tens of thousands of people Here, all across Long Island. So, so that would mean that every, every private entity that made a, pub, a decision that was to protect the public would be entitled to some form of governmental immunity? Every private Every entity? Private no, entity. of course not. Okay, all right. So of course not. So, a private entity, so, by definition, so, is out of the box right, right away. All right. So, um, so, uh, uh, um, uh, so the Con Ed, they don't count. The Con Ed decision clearly is, not a, is a proprietary decision. Con right. Ed decision, well, con, well, proprietary or governmental deals with the decision made by a government to get governmental function immunity. So mm -hmm. Con Ed does not, can't yet invoke the defense. So it's really irrelevant whether it's proprietary or governmental? Yes, but for purposes of the doctrine, I mean, Sebastian, Applewhite, these cases make clear that it is the exercise of the police power. 
Well, I think Applewhite says it's a general rule. No, no, no. That they are in contrast, a municipality will be deemed to have been engaged in a governmental function when its acts are undertaken for the protection and safety of the public pursuant to the general police powers. Okay. Well, we are a government, and the public authorities law says that we exercise essential governmental functions. And when we exercise prudent utility practices, which is defined in public authorities law section 1020B, subdivision 13, uh, in evaluating those prudent utility practices, the legislature declared that uh, in evaluating whether any manner, matter conforms to prudent utility practice, the parties shall take into account the fact that the authority, Long Island Power Authority, is a corporate municipality of the state with the statutory duties and responsibilities thereof. And I think that ties into Apple White's declaration that Governments act to protect the people. Those powers, I think, were given by the legislature. This can is I, a unique, si this is a unique a situation. You made a, a few minutes ago, um, and in response to Judge Fahey's question, and I, I think you said that a private entity wouldn't get immunity no matter what they were doing, by definition, right? Ap apples but, to apples to okay. LIPA, yes. But 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 yet you're arguing that National Grid should get immunity here under some agency principle. And, and could you explain why that's not completely foreclosed by the fact that this is essentially a, it, that, that the immunity is personal to governmental entities? Well, it's personal to governmental entities, but in the Altro case and in the Filarski case, which we cite in our brief, and the governmental entity is working hand in hand with that private entity. And the private entity is, in fact, ca as the Altro case held, carrying out the wishes of the government. Well, isn't, that, isn't it the reverse here? Uh, assuming the facts in the complaint as true, isn't, isn't, isn't it the reverse here that, in fact, Wilco is carrying out, the, that, that, that National Grid is essentially running the show here? That they're, they're National Grid operates our system, the transmission and distribution system, which we own. Long Island Power Authority owns the actual power system. I understand who system. owns it, but right. who's actually making the decisions about, you know, the, the operations of this system? And, and those decisions are made, the, this type of a decision? Whether but we should cut Generally, it's, it's, it's well, National Grid. That, on, on, that's a, on a blue sky it. day, yes. Well, okay. on, on a storm of the century, there's plenty of people from both sides of the aisle, if you will. National Grid and LIPA making those kinds of decisions. That's why they're tied in this kind of a circumstance. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Council? Good afternoon, Your Honors. With respect to the questions posed by uh, Judges Wilson and Feynman, there's no proof in this record that any conscious decision was made um, to not de-energize Breezy Point, or any thought was given well, to you. But isn't the point that because this is in a 3211 posture, we don't know anything, really. Uh, and what we're really just looking at uh, is, is whether your complaint uh, within its four corners makes out a theory uh, that gets you liability. Uh, true. Uh, but my point is that we've heard this about, uh, in their brief and today, about this cost-benefit analysis. That there's no proof it occurred. More than that, Your Honors, you've heard, you've, I've heard talk today and you've read in the brief, it's all about emergency preparedness. There's no proof in this record that there was actually a conscious determination made prior to all of these events. Well, we won't have any proof until they have to put in an answer. Uh, and, and so my question is, let's say uh, the appellate division was correct uh, that if we accept everything you've alleged is true, you, you could maybe have a, a, a claim. But did they go too far, perhaps, uh, in basically kicking out any defense that they may have, uh, either at trial or at least uh, after discovery to, to argue on summary judgment? Uh, Judge, let me go further than that. Let's accept everything that you've just heard factually as true. That would still not get you. Everything that was factually just said, let's assume it's true. There was a conscious decision made before any of these events occurred to not have a plan for storm protocols. And by the way... Well, you're not saying that they're precluded for, from offering a defense to, to a claim of negligence. Of course, you? Your Honor. They're not precluded from that. 
But my, my point is, if you say, as they say, that there was a conscious decision uh, made to not have a plan for storm protocols, and if you check pages 665 to 666 of, 666 of the record, that's what the Moreland Commission focused on. Not the events of these few days, but that in a utility that surfaces an island has no plans for storms, because I guess they don't expect one. <laughs> to, but to again, I, I, think, I, I think the, the point Judge Stein was trying to get you to address, it, it, that sounds like a question on the merits. Exactly. I'm just trying to get to the question of this doctrine and whether or not they're immune under the doctrine. So they but, say that their, their action, given the scope of this emergency, is what makes it a governmental function as opposed to proprietary. Why are they not correct about that? The standards that this court set forth in Tuturo, mm -hmm. in World Trade Center, a close mm -hmm. four to three decision, in Applewhite, a close four to three decision, mm -hmm. very clear what a governmental activity is, what a proprietary activity is. A governmental activity is precisely what you read, Your Honor. Um, it's undertaken for the protection of the public pursuant to the police powers. Why is that important pursuant to the police powers? Because this court rejected a century ago the notion that when the argument was made in Oters, O-E-T-E-R-S in our brief, and before that in Misano, that cleaning the street benefits the public. Of course it benefits the public. It's not, however, done pursuant to the police powers. So this court there said, although a municipality cleaning its streets acts in the interest of public health, nevertheless it discharges a special power which is regarded Here's a question, as Mr. Shute, that I, I've always wondered. If, because these cases, they can be difficult, I think. It is an action that is taken, and it's not taken pursuant to police powers. Is it always then a proprietary action? You know, I'm sure that we can come up with examples of purely municipal actions. Uh, for example, a medical examiner mm -hmm. uh, correcting, or for example, a licensing bureau that grants uh, a license or grants a certificate of occupancy where it's distinctly municipal. That's not this case. Right. You have a trifecta. So, 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 that's, so, it really, that, so, then, that's, so then we're back to what we talked about before. Does the nature of the event then aid us in determining whether it falls on the side of the governmental or proprietary divide? It's two things, Your Honor, mm -hmm. uh, quoting directly from this court's decision. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of the act or omission claimed to give rise to liability and the capacity in which that act or failure to act occurred. So, for example, in Totoro, mm -hmm. it mattered not just what the act was, but who the act door was, i.e. it wasn't police, mm -hmm. it was highway. In Widow, for example, it mattered not just what the act or omission was, but who the act door <laughs> Don't was. Don't look at me, I got Widow wrong. That's uh, <laughs> how this court told me. <laughs> it's both of those things. Now, here, Your Honor, you have a trifecta, which this takes it out of the zip code, of governmental immunity. Number but one. But isn't capacity just another way of saying police powers? Because that's all that that means. Uh, what yes. hat are you wearing? Uh, uh, yes, exactly. Where do you exactly. draw your authority from? In this case, Your Honor, mm -hmm. you have three things. Number one, you have an entity that substitutes for Wilco. The, the test from this court's decisions, and Totoro quoted again and again back from Sebastian. Um, proprietary is when a governmental entity performs a purely proprietary role when its activities essentially substitute for or supplement traditionally private enterprises. And remember, back in Applewhite, it was important to the court that in that case, it was private amb ambulances, the majority opinion by Judge Graffio said, supplementing this critical uh, medical function, rather than the opposite. This is the opposite. That's number one, that's enough to make this proprietary. Number two, we think the persons behind the curtain actually aren't governmental entities at all. The people making the decision is actually the person behind the, cur the curtain is the 2,000 employees of National Grid, not the 100 employees of, the Li of LIPA. Now add three. Why are they, don't they have a plan for, it would seem a good idea, but why, what's the reason for not having a plan? Is there a public policy reason why you don't have a plan for storms? According to the Moorland Commission, 
This is at page 683 of the record. Emergency preparedness is often not seen as contributing to short-term profitability. These people get paid a quarter billion dollars a year, plus an additional sum for every kilowatt that they, that they, they provide, that they sell. They lose money by shutting off the power, and they make no money. Uh, and for the purposes, I'm not talking negligence, Your Honor, I'm talking about the character of the act. How can you possibly say it's governmental when it's substituting for a proprietary um, entity a function that elsewhere throughout the estate, Con Ed, Rochester and Orange, Central Hut, uh, Gas and Electric, um, Niagara Mohawk is all, provide by, all provided by private entities, done by private persons, and according to the Moorland Commission, so, for the so, reasons so of let profit. Me ask you so let me ask you this. So if, if the governor had called, like Ben said, this, now that we've seen how this is shaping up, I want you to close it all down. De-energize that peninsula. And they did. Is that now proprietary or governmental function? I, I'd say it, it differently, Your Honor. It, you know, if, if, if they said it to Con Ed and Con Ed did it, I, I think now you're getting to the area of it's no negligence. Because if you're following what a governmental authority says, it doesn't make it more no governmental if you're Con Ed, but it does make it you're not no, no, negligent. No, but I'm talking about LIPA, not Con Ed. That's a private act. I'm talking about LIPA. I don't think it changes the character of the act. Uh, I think it's, it's a defense in the sense we can't sue them but for negligence. And if they're ordered to do something and they do it, I would say they're not negligent, not that it changes the character of the act of governmental and makes them immune. My time is up, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Isaac, does responding to a disaster of this proportion change the equation for us? Um, Judge DeFiori, I I'm going to take a little bit of a different view on that, and because I I, that's actually something I was going to raise. And if it's okay with the court, I'm not going to repeat what Mr. Schutz said. He's a terrific lawyer. He's far better than I am. But I think that helps us. And I'm going to go back to something that nobody's spoken about at all, Paul's graph, right? The risk reasonably to be perceived defines the duty to be obeyed. Risk imports relation. The greater the threat, the more the need for ameliorative measures. I don't see the, the, the immenseness of the storm as being a factor that should redound to the benefit of municipality or a, 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 a municipal entity that's running a power grid because that's what they do. Look. So are you saying that it goes to their negligence, not to the nature of their 100 percent. And, and I think three judges here have actually cited the test right out of Sebastian. I mean, it couldn't be clearer. Proprietary activities occur where the activities substitute for or supplement tra for traditionally private enterprises. Let's look at what LIPA did in this case. Some of the judges on but this. When a private enterprise would make that decision, aren't the considerations that go into that decision for a private entity very different than the same decisions that would go into, for example, the state making this I, decision? I would, I would say absolutely. Lots of things. I, 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 would, I would say the only difference is that one has a different corporate charter. I would say the answer to that is no. And let me tell you why. The threat to the public, he keeps talking about the public. Now, all public officials, it doesn't matter if you're a court of appeals judge, you're, a, you're a, a worker for the sanitation department, or you're one of a, a clerk, everybody does the same thing. You're all public servants. You exist to, to protect the public. So obviously, that can't be the test. This type of enterprise, for 100 years, even Judge Miller in his dissenting opinion said this is proprietary-like activities. The risk to the public, if we're going to look at the public, is exactly the same. It doesn't matter if Con Ed is doing it. It doesn't matter if LIPE is doing it. It doesn't matter if Niagara Mohawk or Power is doing it. It's exactly the same. And the MSA itself speaks about prudent utility practice. That's what we should be talking about. There's no reason to increase immunities because, as your decisions have shown, specifically the Totoro decision, going back to the Haddock decision, we don't want to extend immunities to situations where there is no discretion being exercised. That's why, despite Weiss against Foden, Totoro, you said, unless there's an exact match with respect to the study and the theory of plaintiff's liability, there is no governmental discretionary immunity. I would point out to the court, as I think uh, Judge Stein pointed out and Judge Rivera pointed out, LIPA succeeded LILCO. And then what did they do? 
they delegated, according to the Moreland Commission and according to the allegations in our complaint, almost complete authority to another private entity. So if they're, if they're taking over for a public <coughs> entity, because, or private entity, I'm sorry, because there was mass dissatisfaction with Lilco, and that's in the report, and look, I'm a Long Island resident, I, I understand that, but then they're delegating that very function to another private entity, how can you, under Sebastian, under Totoro, under Applewhite, doesn't matter which of the cases you cite, how can you say that that is something other than a proprietary duty? It just doesn't make sense, not based on what Brian Isaac said, not based on what Brian Schutz said, based on the actions of LIPA itself, which is the best indication of what's transpiring. I would also point out to you that the Moreland Commission report isn't a report commissioned by plaintiff's lawyers, it's a state commissioned report that's admissible. If you look at footnote four of our brief. But isn't there a difference between delegating the implementation of the choice and what they're arguing about is the choice itself? Well, let that, that discretionary decision, that that's it, it, theirs and they made that choice and that that is a governmental uh, choice that is protected by the governmental function doctrine. Right. My not the implementation of it, not that a, a private contractor is the one that ensures something is or is not de-energized. Right. My, my response is no, and, and I'll make it very, very easy. If you look, we've cited to, and I, I just want you to, to note this for your disposition. Mm -hmm. If you look at the PGI, 2 colon 195 sets forth the general rule for public authorities. Uh, excuse me, for um, uh, power authorities. And it says, quote, in view of the dangerous and subtle character of electricity and the ease of its escape from transmission lines, an electric power company, that's what LIPA is. It's, in, it's, it's a governmental entity, but it's an electric power company, has the duty to use that degree of care, which is reasonably necessary to prevent persons from coming into contact with the transmission line and to prevent a dangerous escape of electricity, PJI 2 colon, uh, P PGI 2 colon o well, 205 says, quote, an electric power company must use reasonable care to keep its transmission lines from falling and sagging. You know that in our, in the Heron case, we actually got some foil requests. We showed that there was sagging and arcing lines, and we showed that there was LIPA notification some 10 to 12 hours before. Does LIPA have a tariff on file with the Public Utilities Commission that essentially exempts it from any negligence other than gross negligence? It depends on what we're talking about. There's a difference between interruption of service and there's a difference between the provision of electricity. With respect to interrupting service, which is what Mr. Shute and I were talking about in our brief, they are exempt except for gross negligence. With respect to supplying electricity, ordinary negligence applies. And as we pointed out in the Lee against Con Ed case, the, uh, the utilities have used a tariff in accordance with the public service law as well, to have the force and effect of law. They've used that successfully to immunize themselves from liability. So I would also argue that in, it, I know it's an old case, and my adversary points out it's old, but I still think it's good law. In the Van Lee case, you said, and I quote, unusual precautions must be taken against extraordinary dangers when discussing electricity. I see I have just probably 40 seconds. I cannot for the life of me fathom how a for-profit company that's making a quarter of a billion dollars to a captive audience, we don't have the ability to go get another power company, can claim that they get transferred or derivative immunity. If you look at the appellate division decision sites, they're right on point. It isn't fair, it isn't just, and this court should absolutely say that. Thank Thanks you, for counsel. Listening. Counsel? Thank you, Your Honor. To talk about uh, many things, but let's start with the man behind the curtain argument that we heard from Mr. Shute. If it was their obligation to prove that LIPA made a decision not to de-energize the Rockaways, they'd be pointing to our website and to our Twitter feed which says LIPA is not de-energizing any part of its service area other than Fire Island. And they'd say that as a matter of law, that's an admission that binds us. Now, we did have a plan and the Moreland Commission found that to be that we evacuate and de-energize in coordination with those evacuation decisions. And if I may, at page 444 of the Heron record, there's a status report from the governor's office about 20 hours before the storm hit and said, referring to Con Ed's preemptive de-energization of some portions of its air, uh, service area, that all shutdowns of electric service, quote, will be coordinated with customers and the city 
and state offices of emergency management, the New York City Police Department, the New York City Housing Authority, the MTA, elected officials, and local municipalities. That's what's required when you evacuate and de-energize, and that sounds pretty governmental so, to so me. So what factors did your client take into consideration that a private utility would not have to take into consideration to make this decision? Well, private utility is going to be answerable in damages. My client can make a decision, as this court has said uh, on several occasions, free from that second guessing. Okay, so we can may, may have made the same decisions, but there has to be, when you're talking about thousands of people, if not all of the South Shore of Long Island. I mean, if the duty runs to de-energize the Rockaways, why doesn't it run all the way to Montauk Point? We're going to shut down all of Long Island? And that's proprietary? But d again, doesn't that go back to whether there was negligence, not whether it's proprietary or governmental? Well, I, mean, they, I, I just I don't understand how the, how the, the, the nature of the act, the act, changes depending upon whether there's no storm, a little storm, a big storm, well, an even bigger storm. It, <laughs> Judge Stein, it goes to the allocation of resources, and I'm reminded of what Judge Kay said in a concurrence in the Miller case. One dormitory, no locks, is very different than 27 dormitories and thousands of students. Allocation and the, of police resources. Allocation of government resources to protect the public. Yes, and but I, that's, a, that's the point. In those cases, the allocation of where do you deploy police, where do you deploy firefighters, EMT, how do you use them, what's the time allotted, that, that's the deployment of resources. Well, the deployment Your case of, is a decision to de-energize or not de-energize. There are a tremendous, as I just indicated from the hearing record, a tremendous amount of resources involved in evacuation and in cooperation with all of the government entities involved yes, but I, to I, 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 I appreciate that argument, that, that government is busy with ensuring that people are out of the area that they've ordered an evacuation on. They're using their police force, they're using their firefighters and these other responders to address that. But again, I don't, again, I'm, That's I'm, like I'm really asking what's the point of LIPA's choice here that connects to that kind of deployment of resources? Well, so, is, doesn't their own complaint say that they had to use uh, police, for example, in Fire Island to go make sure everybody's off life support and all of that? That's in the record. Uh, so, so, well, it's not just in the record, it's in their allegations, uh, and that's what we're evaluating. Absolutely. Uh, so that's sort of cut against uh, their claim uh, and their answer uh, Judge Rivera's question. They, they, they're well, those uh, LIPA personnel? LIPA personnel, I don't think LIPA personnel, but in coordination no, with the county. My question is about the your client. They were cooperating with the county. But they would do that even if it was Con Ed. I, I think that. If it was Con Ed making that choice, you'd have the same emergency but it doesn't implicate personnel doing that. It doesn't implicate the government when Con Ed does it. When LIPA does it, you're saying, well, let's do it here, but not there. So sue us if we de energize here, but not there. And if I may just say one other thing, it's a two-way street immunity. If, if uh, in regard to one of the questions that was posed, if the governor said shut, shut it down, if the governor obviously here had powers because of the emergency declaration, but put that aside for a minute. Let's say the head of the MTA said, we've got this superstorm coming, shut down the transit system. I would argue that's an absolutely governmental function immune decision. And if he said, Keep the trains running. We're going to ru keep the transit system alive. That, too, would be immune. And does Con Ed get the same immunity if the governor tells Con Ed shut down the grid? I would think that if the government told them to do it, absolutely. I see Thank my time you, is up. Thank you, Your Honor.